Hello, I'm Christian Wellard. I'm Curatorial Assistant here at the Royal Armouries here in Leeds. This is a beautiful side-by-side -side flintlock shotgun, and this is up in arms. So this gun is quite a firm favourite amongst many of the team here at the Armouries. A lot of people who have seen it will very quickly fall in love and it's quite easy to see why just looking at the, the gorgeous decoration of the piece. Uh, just to give a bit of overview as to what we're looking at here, so it's a side-by-side -side flintlock gun, uh, it's a muzzle loader, it's got side-by-side -side locks and in typical fashion of the later uh, flintlock era we have some nice little details. We have for example a waterproof pan here on each lock it's also got a platinum insert for the touch hole. We've also got a roller on the uh, frizzen here to make a very slick action when it's uh, being struck by the, by the uh, cock. And also a false breech here with break off barrels. So it's technologically speaking, uh, very much in line with the times uh, where this is from about 1850. We get that date from a combination of those features as well as uh, the maker here on the lock. So each lock is signed in gold by uh, Zawe. Uh, apologies to the French for my probable butchering of that pronunciation. But Zawe is a gun maker noted for being active in Marseille around 1850. And so uh, that's the sort of date that we get for this piece. On top of that as well, we have on the barrels Canon de Leclerc. Uh, Leclerc is a Belgian barrel maker who this, this inscription in various different fonts shows up on a number of guns, all dating to around this time period. So he's quite a prolific gun, uh, barrel maker at this time. So I've spoken about the technical aspects of this and there isn't really much new there to talk about. Uh, but instead it is simply all about this gorgeous decoration all over this thing. Uh, starting off quite simply with some very nicely blued barrels up here, a very deep, uh, very nicely polished sort of blue. And they've also got some fluting here for extra decoration. And also in relief some gold vine leaves and a little bit of scroll work going all along from this point down and then also onto the locks and the top tang as well. And then in the woodwork, we have similar features here, except now we've got a very nice contrast between two different colors. So we've got silver scroll work with those vine leaves continuing here. And then on top of that, we've got some nicely done uh, gold grapes that really stick out and it just makes the thing just pop. On top of that, we also have some nice deco uh, decoration on the, on the uh, woodwork. So we've got some foliate in, uh, carving up here and also down on the ends of the locks and then some nice grooves here as well which uh, terminate down here towards the butt and that really is uh, the main element of this piece unfortunately we don't actually have too much of a story behind it we don't know the previous owners uh, we don't know who would have been able to afford something like this uh, but nonetheless it can tell us some interesting facts about that individual uh, of course as you can see they are a person of some means. This would not have been a cheap purchase back in 1850, uh, especially with such intricate and um, dense engraving and um, decoration as you see on here. So they've clearly got some money going for them, but you could also say that this might be an expression of them as a person and their career and their profession. So perhaps it was made for a vintner um, just to demonstrate at their home uh, a joint uh, show of wealth as well as their passion for their their work in producing wine perhaps. And that sort of goes in with the idea of what these guns are, as much as they are a tool or in some cases decorative item, uh, they're also partly an expression of the person who owns them. And so it wouldn't be uh, impossible for someone to portray themselves through the gun that they have uh, paid a lot of money to have decorated for them. We've also got a very nicely decorated scroll trigger guard here extending back to form a grip and it's also got this lovely uh, scroll uh, pattern to it uh, twisting round all over at the front and the rear 
and then also these very nicely and quite finely, these are very slender uh, chiseled elements on the triggers, uh, especially that front trigger. It's very, very narrow, but it does also look very pleasing to the eye uh, with that pierced, uh, pierced decorative style there. So all in all, this is a really beautiful piece and I chose it for up in arms simply because of that gorgeous decoration here and also really partly the mystery as well. Uh, as I said, we don't know much about the history of this gun or its previous owners, but that doesn't mean we can't appreciate it you know, just for what it is. And also we can speculate a little bit about its past, its owners and what they may have done and who they may have been. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to come and visit the Royal Armouries, of course, we have our three sites here in the UK. They're all open to the public, both uh, all in Leeds, at the Tower of London and down at Fort Nelson with our artillery collection. Uh, on top of that, if you want to uh, like and subscribe to this channel and see more videos like this, feel free to do so. Uh, every little bit of support helps. And of course, we are also a charity. So if you have anything to help with, out with that in any way, uh, with either time or a, perhaps a donation, uh, information on that is all down in the box below. Thank you.